Dear students and quant finance practitioners, uh, my name is Sasha Stoikov, and I'd like to talk to you about the micro price. Um, I hope uh, you're dealing well with uh, isolation. These times can be hard, but uh, I hope also that uh, sometimes with isolation, uh, one can gain perspective on the work that one is doing. And uh, this has been the case for me where uh, I decided to uh, revisit a paper that uh, was published in Quantitative Finance uh, in 2018, and um, and uh, and somehow uh, keep it a little simpler and and give you a a, a version of this that um, that you can uh, dig in. So I've included a NyPython notebook um, that I will link out, um, which will allow you to play with the data uh, and understand the concepts and ultimately plug this into your own data and uh, continue this type of research. So uh, in a nutshell, I, I would say that the last 20 years, um, one of the most uh, remarkable transformations in the financial markets has been the transition from a mostly uh, human dominated uh, market of, of the, uh, let's say, uh, 20th century to uh, right now in 2020 uh, uh, markets that are dominated by uh, algorithm, algorithms. Um, this transition has been uh, very dramatic and, um, and my research has uh, focused uh, in the last 15 years on these matters. Um, in fact, the micro price is a concept that has been a, at the heart of my research and, um, and I've encountered it in multiple problems arising in market microstructure. So um, the first type of problems is market making problems. Um, the second is uh, optimal execution problems, also known as algo trading. And uh, thirdly, the, the problem of uh, forecasting prices at a high frequency, which is the realm of HFTs. So let me share my screen and um, show you the IPython notebook uh, for the presentation. So in a nutshell, the, the concept of the micro price uh, is aimed to capture the fair price uh, of an asset given the state of the order book. Now, uh, the, the fair price uh, is something that we're going to want to be between the bid and the ask. Um, and this, of course, falls very much in the realm of big data and finance. Uh, as we know, these, uh, the state, the order book updates at the millisecond uh, timescale. So, um, and I will try to stick to the KISS principle, which um, I don't know if you're familiar with it. I'm not talking about the, uh, the famous uh, hard rock band that uh, dresses up like clowns. Um, KISS uh, essentially means keep it simple, stupid. And, uh, and I hope that uh, this introduction will, um, will motivate you and, and uh, want you to dig a bit deeper. So the big question is, what is the fair price given bid and ask prices and sizes? And these are quantities that really only an algorithm can keep track uh, of because uh, they update at the millisecond uh, timescale. So, uh, the fair price, also called um, the true price among practitioners or uh, sometimes uh, the fundamental or the efficient price uh, in, acad in academia. Um, and uh, we're going to uh, just define a notion of micro price. And this, as I mentioned before, uh, is a notion that can be useful for algorithmic traders, HFT, and market makers. So just to define things uh, clearly, uh, algorithms 
are able to uh, keep track of the bid, the ask, the bid size, and the ask size at a very high frequency. And uh, one uh, reference point uh, that is often looked at is the mid price, which is essentially the, the average between the bid and ask prices. Um, another notion of, of fair price is the, the weighted mid price. And what the way this is computed is by taking the bid and the ask, and instead of averaging them uh, with the midpoint, uh, we're going to use a weighing scheme that um, puts more weight on the ask when the quantity at the bid is large and more weight at the bid when the quantity at the ask is large. And uh, this has been looked at by many practitioners. And, um, and finally, um, sort of stuck here at the bottom is the, the spread, which is the difference between the ask and the bid which uh, for many of the assets that uh, we're, we're looking at will either be a spread of one tick, two ticks, three ticks, or four ticks. And uh, the, the, the stocks that, um, um, that we will look at, some of them will have a spread of one tick 99% of the time, and some of them will have spreads of two or three ticks more often than one tick. So um, just so you can see how this uh, IPython order book works, uh, I will include a, a sample data file. And um, as, you, as you can see, uh, this is a very standard uh, structure, which I hope that you'll be able to adapt to other uh, data sets. Um, and ultimately, this loads the, the um, uh, order book updates at the top of the book uh, for Bank of America. And as we can see here, the, the bid and the ask stay at 1433 and 1434. But you can see that the bid sizes and ask sizes uh, change uh, from one quote to the next. Now, if you plot um, the uh, bid, the ask, the mid, and the weighted mid, you can get a sense of the, the behavior of these quantities. First of all, the, the, the mid, uh, is a some, somewhat medium uh, term signal in, in the sense that it moves every, in this case, every 10 updates or so. And um, um, however, the weighted mid price, which takes into account the bid sizes and the ask sizes, as you can see, moves at a higher frequency. And, um, but you can also note uh, a few things, which are that um, which I'll come to in the next slide. So uh, the mid price is not a uh, martingale, and um, this is a, a fact that's documented, and it's known as the bid ask bounce. When the mid price moves up a tick, uh, it's much more likely to move down a tick on the second move. And uh, as we can see in the previous slide, it's a medium term signal. And it doesn't use the volume at the best bid and the best asks. The weighted mid, on the other hand, uses uh, these volumes, is a higher frequency signal, but is sometimes considered to be quite noisy, especially when the spread widens to two ticks. So here's uh, what we're going to aim for. Um, the micro price will end up being a function of three uh, variables. The mid price, the imbalance um, at the top of the order book, and the bid ask spread. And uh, we'll see that some of the features of the microprice are that uh, the microprice is a martingale. Uh, it's very fast to compute. And, um, and in the paper, you can see that um, we, we, the, the microprice uh, gives better short-term predictions than either the mid price or the weighted mid price. And in some sense, lives between the two. Um, and I will demonstrate this uh, with some large tick stocks like Bank of America. So what I mean by that is a stock where the, tick, the spread is mostly one tick and um, small tick stocks like Chevron where the bid ask spread uh, is more often two ticks or three ticks. So um, here's the a general outline. First I'll define the micro price, then I'll um, I'll give you a, 
uh, a simple Markov model that uh, captures most of the dynamics. And I'll show you some data analysis on Bank of America and Chevron and hope that you'll be able to do the same on, uh, on other data sets. So here's the definition. The, the micro price is actually defined as a sequence of um, uh, approximations to the micro price, where the nth approximation is the expected mid price uh, at time tau n, which means uh, the, the nth mid, mid price change in the future. So this is a random time. And, um, and we can see that the definition simply um, defines this in terms of a, an expectation, which keeps the uh, a martingale structure, which uh, we are uh, interested in, in uh, exploring. So in, in, in practice, we find that uh, P6, so the expected mid price after six price moves, uh, tends to converge quite well. And, um, and that's what we're going to do in the data analysis section. Uh, but now um, the main result of the paper is that the, the nth uh, micro price can be written in terms of uh, the mid price and a uh, sum of n what we're going to call micro price adjustments, these functions g um, that are written in terms of expectations and that can be computed recursively. Now let's define uh, the Markov uh, states. Um, so the imbalance takes uh, n values, um, and we, we, we should discretize the, the imbalance, which is a continuous variable. And the spread is already discretized and uh, basically is given by the number of ticks. Um, and another important uh, factor is the, the, or assumption is that the mid price, when it does change, does not change uh, by more than one tick at a time. So as you can see, the, the mid price can go down by a full tick, but it can go down by half a tick, can go up by a half a tick, and go up by a full tick. And uh, so we can see that you can define this state space x, which, is, uh, which has n times m um, values. And um, ultimately, this computation uh, with the discretized model turns into a, a simple matrix uh, multiplication, um, which uh, uses ma matrices Q, uh, which are these uh, transition probabilities uh, for transient states in the order book. So what we mean by transient states is states where the mid price does not move, but potentially the, um, the uh, the imbalance and the spread could change. And, uh, and the matrix R1, which uh, captures the absorbing states. So those are the times that the mid price does move. And when it does move, it does move in these four uh, different ways. So uh, as you can see, this is once we've estimated the matrices Q and R, uh, the computation is very fast. Um, and then the next step is to iteratively compute uh, successive uh, refinements of the of the or adjustments to the micro price and this uh, can be simply done with a simple matrix um, multiplication where here the R2 matrix is a new matrix of absorbing states so um, once we apply this procedure and compute the micro price um, we have to ensure that this, uh, this, uh, this sum converges. And in fact, uh, if you don't approximate um, or appropriately symmetrize the data, uh, you may find that this price does not converge. So I'll, in, in the next section, I'll, I'll describe how this data is symmetrized. And uh, the paper also provides uh, technical uh, conditions for this to happen. So let's jump into Bank of America and CVX, two uh, highly liquid stocks, yet their microstructure is quite different from, one, from another. So the estimation procedure, in a nutshell, on every quote, we compute the imbalance, the spread, 
and the change in mid price after having discretized the state space. And the second important step is to symmetrize the data uh, by basically uh, for every uh, state um, transition that we see to sort of uh, construct a symmetric transition. Um, in other words, if your imbalance is 0.9 and, uh, and we're compute and the mid price went up, uh, then we're going to add a, a duplicate copy where the imbalance is one minus 0.9, so uh, 0.1, and the mid price went down. And you can see from this uh, procedure that the spread is uh, already symmetric in a sense and doesn't need to be uh, updated. So ultimately this uh, will lead to an estimation procedure that will produce the matrices Q, R1 and R2. And from there, uh, we take it to the races and estimate um, the microprice adjustments. Now, um, so as you can see, the, the first thing we're going to look at is the G1, the first order microprice adjustment. And then we recursively are, are use our formulas to compute the sixth microprice adjustment, um, which is given here below. And, uh, and uh, that's what we're gonna be focusing our attention on. Uh, now, what I have here is uh, the code that uh, processes the data. Uh, here I have the code that estimates the, the transition probability matrices. And, uh, and here I have a code that uh, essentially plots the microprice adjustments. Let's take a look at Bank of America. Here I'm just loading the data. There are a couple parameters such as how many uh, imbalanced states we want and how many spread states for Bank of America. Uh, 10 imbalanced states and two um, bit as spreads uh, seems to do the trick. So after estimating the microprice adjustment, we can compare them to um, the, uh, the adjustments uh, in the case of the mid price or the weighted mid price. So as you can see, the, um, the mid price does not depend on imbalance and is essentially this flat line at uh, uh, in blue, and the weighted mid price is one that sort of adjusts linearly uh, the price as a function of imbalance. As, and as you can see, the orange line here is basically a straight line where, with the uh, intercepts negative 005 and positive uh, 005, which is exactly half a spread. So that's um, that's what the weighted mid price adjustment is in the case where the, the spread is equal to one tick. And what you can see is that the, the microprice adjustments in, uh, in green and in red, uh, in green for the spread equal to one tick case and in red, the spread equal to two uh, ticks case, uh, we can see that um, the, uh, the behavior is sort of sandwiched between the mid price and the weighted mid price. And in fact, is a bit steeper when the spread is one tick than when the spread is two ticks. Um, and this is probably due to the fact that uh, when the spread is one tick, the, the quantities at the bid and the ask have more information content. Um, what I'd like to take a look at next, uh, at next is the, the stationary distribution in our model for, the, for Bank of America which here, again, it's uh, the x-axis is imbalance and, um, and the y-axis is frequency. And we can see that the spread of one tick is observed much more often than the spread equal to one to two ticks. And also that the uh, spread equal to one tick distribution is uh, U-shaped. Uh, in other words, the imbalance uh, likes to be near uh, the, the zero and one extremes. On the other hand, when the spread is two ticks, uh, you tend to have uh, bid and ask sizes of more roughly equal sizes and the distribution is much more centered around 0.5. Now looking at CVX and, and running the same thing with a few slightly different parameters here, uh, four imbalance buckets and four spreads, 
because CVX is a different kind of stock, uh, often known as small tick stocks. And uh, we get similar pictures where uh, the uh, micro price adjustments fall in between uh, the mid and the weighted mid. And in fact, you can see that the tighter the spread, the steeper uh, the adjustment, uh, again, indicating that tighter spreads lead to more information at the top of the order. Uh, and finally, we can look at the stationary distribution of, um, of uh, the, the micro price, um, or rather the stationary distribution of the state space. And again, you can see that um, for e given a certain tick size, the, uh, the imbalance does not have a very big impact on uh, the micro price. However, when the spread is two ticks, the, um, the adjustment um, or, or rather the, um, the, the spread equal to two ticks is a more common configuration of the order book than the spread equal to here in, in green and um, blue. Of in the cases where the spread is one tick or three ticks, and we can see that spread equal to four ticks are quite rare on CVX. So um, finally, I'd like to conclude which in, and recap a little bit um, the, the, the messages of the talk. Um, so the, the micro price, as you can see, has been defined as the expected mid price in the distant future. And in practice, uh, looking at six uh, mid-price moves um, has us converge to the micro price. Um, the, the paper, if you look at the empirical section, you'll see that there's evidence that the micro price is a good predictor of future mid-prices. And in fact, uh, the micro price can fit very different microstructures, ranging from large tick Bank of America type stocks to um, small tick uh, Chevron type stocks. And the way micro price is defined is in, an, in a horizon independent way. Um, and we find empirically that the micro price seems to live between the, uh, the bid and the ask, uh, even though it's not uh, uh, constrained to be there. So uh, I hope that you find this lecture useful and that you will uh, download uh, the Jupyter Notebook and a sample of the data, and, uh, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.